Hi everyone, welcome to Outside the Code, a show dedicated to learning about the stories behind professionals in tech. I also cover news in the tech industry to keep you up to date. I'm your host, Alex Lee, creator of Tech Rally. This is episode 10 of Outside the Code. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Today's guests are Andrew, Christine, and Joe. They are Thinkful Coding Bootcamp alumni and currently all work as full-time software engineers. They will be sharing their experience during their time as students. Please keep in mind, this is their own personal experience with Thinkful. Please do your research before ultimately deciding if a coding bootcamp, self-taught, or traditional schooling is right for you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tech Rally Coding Bootcamp Review. In this series, we're going to be talking about coding bootcamps. I got three alumni with me that attended the Thinkful Coding Bootcamp, so I'm super excited about chatting with them and just hearing about their experiences. Uh, Joseph, Christine, Andrew, thank you for just sharing a little bit of your time to just tell us about your journey and experience. Can each of you just give us a quick introduction about yourself? What did you do before Thinkful? What year did you graduate? And what are you doing now? And let's start off with Joseph. Yeah, I graduated Thinkful in July 2021. And before that, I didn't have any like software engineering like background or no coding background at all. Uh, I was actually a CPA and an accountant working in public accounting for about three years before doing so. So worked in there and then eventually made the decision to switch into software. And uh, now I'm work primarily at the back end as a software engineer. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll go next. Um, yeah, so I'm Christine. Uh, before I went to Thinkful, I was a high school math teacher. So I was doing that for four years and I went to Thinkful from December of 2020 to July of 2021. And now I'm a software engineer at Walnut, which is a Series A startup. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Andrew. Uh, I graduated from Thinkful's uh, full-time immersion program in February of 2021. Uh, before then, I was actually working as a recruiter until I lost my job at the beginning of COVID. Um, and I had actually, uh, I hated being a recruiter so much that I had started teaching myself to code a little bit to like build things to, to do my job for me, <laughs> um, which is uh, kind of how I ended up, uh, I decided to kind of pursue, uh, pursue that. My, my girlfriend was like, Hey, that's a good thing for you to do. Um, and, uh, and now I, I work for a company called Batovi, we're a, a JavaScript consulting company. Um, and I am primarily, uh, primarily a react dev now. So. Nice, nice. Were you doing recruiting specifically for software developers or just? Uh, not specifically. Like I did, we were a pretty generalist recruiting firm, but, um, you know, there's a lot of recruiting to do in tech. So we did do a lot of tech stuff. So I was certainly uh, aware of uh, <laughs> of the ins and outs of, of tech hiring uh, for right. sure, uh, which right. is, that was, was no small part in me deciding to pursue it. Cause you know, <laughs> it's only so long you can uh, work for uh, pennies as a recruiter, seeing the big tech salaries you're recruiting for and not want to, not want to get a little bit yourself. <laughs> yeah. So if there are any uh, recruiters listening in, you know, being a software engineer is not that bad. <laughs> what was the reason for choosing a coding bootcamp over maybe self-taught traditional education? I'll go first on that one. Um, I felt, uh, I think primarily that I needed some structure. Um, I, like I said, I was kind of learning on my own. I taught myself some, some basic Python, some basic JavaScript. I'd gone through like free code camp and some, some things like that. Um, but I, I felt like I didn't really know what I didn't know and didn't know exactly what I needed to go and learn. Um, and, Every time I kind of tried to look at that, like, you know, you know, like roadmap to being a software developer, like it was just like so much. And I'm like, I have no idea what to actually focus on. Um, I also had a good friend of mine uh, who had gone through one. Um, so I, it was a little bit of like, if they can do it, I can do it kind of a deal. Um, but I, I definitely needed that, that uh, the structure and also just kind of the... Um, like, I guess, like having my chips in, you know, kind of going all in on something, not, you know, you know didn't have... Uh, uh, the choice to, to to back out, you know, once you make that kind of a commitment. So I think that was those were the two big things uh, that uh, that pushed me to do a formal formal boot camp. Probably of a similar or same vein. Um, I just didn't know what I didn't know, and like I dabbled with things in uh, like Code Academy to like get my feet wet a little bit. Uh, but I also had like another friend who 
did a boot camp through Thinkful. So I didn't need to either even bother like doing research because it's like, oh, it worked for her. So it'll probably work for me too. Um, and yeah, a lot of it was the structure and just teaching me like, where should I even start? Because uh, if I don't even know where to start, I probably don't know how to end. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And I guess like for myself, um, well, my husband went to a coding boot camp, and uh, I think he had a pretty like positive experience overall going to one. So um, he suggested it to me, and I think like I really wanted that um, like a mentor to kind of like guide me through uh, rather than myself just like studying on my own. Right, that makes sense. And there's just a lot of coding boot camps out there. Uh, why did you choose Thinkful? Did you do any research beforehand? And if so, what kind of research did you talk to other alumni? It sounds like some people had other friends that did it, but uh, was there anything outside of that that you did before ultimately deciding on Thinkful? Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. So it, I feel like Thinkful was a pretty easy decision. Um, I actually didn't know Joe um, before. <laughs> I didn't know that he <laughs> went to Thinkful. Um, and I didn't know um, that I actually had like friends who went there whenever I was signing up for it. But they had this like scholarship program for like, uh, I guess like women, like going into tech. So if you were a woman going into tech, like there was a little bit of like, like a scholarship. So um, I applied for that. And I think it was also what attracted me to Thinkful was their reimbursement program. So if you were not able to like land a job within like six months of graduating, like given certain conditions that um, then you could get potentially like refunded your tuition. So yeah, yeah, definitely we could talk more about that the conditions, but that's that's a good uh good way to research for sure. <laughs> I think the the thing that attracted me to Thinkful um at the outset was at least for the uh, I'm not sure how it works in the the Flux program. Maybe Joseph, you could touch on that, but uh, at least I know the in the full time immersion program they um so they they would you know, pair everyone up with a, with a mentor that they would meet with kind of one-on-one -on, -one on a, on a uh, regular basis um, to help kind of help them and, you know, guide them through the, through the program. So you, I think it was probably like once a week. So you always had someone that you were going to meet with and, and, and be able to ask questions one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and they even did that before um, enrolling, like in their like pre-course, you would, you could get that as well. Um and I, that really, really appealed to me. Um, after I got into the program, um, that's where I start not pulling punches, I guess. Um, I found out it was kind of a, um, it was kind of a dice roll. Um, I got very lucky. I had a great mentor. Um, my, my mentor was awesome. Um, many of my uh, cohort mates uh, would, would like, I, I'd be in our group chat being like, oh, I just had the greatest meeting with my mentor. And they'd be like, my mentor hasn't shown up to a meeting in a month. Or my mentor, like I asked my mentor how to solve like XYZ, you know, relatively simple problem. And they were, you know, they didn't, they couldn't help me solve it, right? So the quality seemed to be a bit of a, a hit or miss. So I guess I, I, I got pretty lucky lucky in that the, the, the thing that attracted me uh, to it did end up being, uh, uh, was good for me. Um, but it, it was just a, a complete dice roll on kind of who you got um, mm -hmm. and how much they were going to put into it, uh, I guess, and, and how how good they were. Um, but yeah. so it's it definitely really good in theory. Love the mentor, um, <laughs> the, the mentor aspect uh, as an idea. Um, but the consistency was definitely lacking from what I saw. Yeah, and we'll definitely uh, dive a little bit deeper into that as well. Joseph, I don't think we talked about this in the beginning, but you it sounds like you didn't do the immersive Thinkful coding bootcamp, but it, what was it exactly that you did? So Thinkful had like two different programs, uh, at least like when I started. It was the immersive or immersion and the flex program. And I did the flex program which didn't have as much of a, I guess, like barrier to entry. Like I didn't need to worry about like taking a, like a coding assessment before or anything like that, but everything was a lot more flexible. And I just needed that for like my season of life. Cause my plan was to always like work part-time while like, like while learning coding on the side and then having things full as like my guidance. And mm -hmm. like, I just couldn't attend all the live sessions and stuff like that. That's okay. Um, but so I didn't miss out on things on like a cohort and things like that. I did have the one-on-one -on -one mentor. Uh, we met like twice a week. Um, 
and I still had like the like the support through like the help desk and everything. Uh, but that's ultimately why I chose the Flex program. Um, it was also cheaper, which was nice. <laughs> Do they explain to you about this mentorship? program aspect before joining like was this something you knew or was this something that just kind of you you just got once you signed up or you didn't realize that there was this was part of the like core i guess appeal of joining a coding bootcamp like this that was definitely something that uh like my friend told me before uh mm. because one of the reasons why i didn't really bother looking for another bootcamp was oh it worked for her and then ah. she told me about the whole <laughs> Like refund, like policy uh, with like the certain like conditions with it. If you don't find a job like six months after, uh, the support that she had like for looking for a job because ultimately we're not just learning to code to learn how to code. Mm -hmm. It's nice to find a job after, uh, but a lot of the support that came after and a lot of the learning process that she had, especially with her cohort. Again, I didn't get that, but that's okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. And I'm just curious, uh, how hard was it to get in? Joe, it sounds like for you, it, it wasn't too hard because it was the part-time program. <laughs> so it was it just apply and you get accepted <laughs> or something? Uh, pretty much. They okay. were pretty persistent in getting me like on board like quick. Interesting. Uh, you know, for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, there was, I basically just applied. <laughs> I see. I see. And was there any test or kind of, I don't know, because I know some uh, coding boot camps, they require you to pass their exam or do a couple of rounds of interviews. Uh, was there anything like that for at least the part-time experience? No, I think he might have had like a basic phone screen to see if I was a normal human being. Person. And I think that was it. <laughs> what about the uh, immersive experience? Yeah, for, for, for me at least... Um... I would say it was almost the the illusion of a barrier to entry. Um, what what I experienced, uh, they, they, you know, there there was a a kind of a pre course that you could go through for free, and they'd pair you up with with a mentor for the pre course that you could meet with a couple of times, and then there was uh, kind of like a, an exam to get in. And I, I remember being a little stressed about it and wondering, like, being like, oh man, like this is this is like a big deal. And then even at the time, with as little knowledge as i had i was like that that that, that was it <laughs> like that was like i don't remember exactly what it was but it was like um you know not even like fizz buzz it, it was like very very ba basic um mm -hmm. if, if i'm remembering right and so it, it it felt a little bit like oh yeah no we were testing everyone to make sure everyone uh gets in um you know everyone who gets in is is, is going to be up to a certain level but like it there it was i i I don't think they were really filtering anyone out. <laughs> the filtering, the filtering happened later after they catch the checks. I'm just curious before I ask about kind of the curriculum, how many people uh, graduated, and all of those things. I I'm noticing kind of this group here is they seem very motivated and very uh, hyper focused whenever they meet. They have a goal, so which I think is pretty awesome. So in some ways, do you feel after you finish this experience, do you think people came into a coding boot camp? prepare to with that understanding like this is going to be really tough i think definitely i think i think definitely you got to have that <laughs> have that, yeah. that mindset because it is right like it's not right like uh it, you know you know that they're, they're uh yeah i feel you know i feel like most people um you're certainly a a, a majority of people i think try to like get into something like coding boot camp because they see the the, the money that they could make in, in tech and and uh and, and how it could be life-changing for them and that's very true um but there's a reason i think why mm -hmm. you can get paid so well in tech and that's because uh it's hard <laughs> it's really difficult uh, and so you're gonna you know you're you're gonna earn that <laughs> um it, it's gonna be difficult and so yeah i i, I definitely um, I, I'd say, I, I don't want to say like, it's like, oh, you have to be a specific type of person, but I, I think you do got to, let, let me it. rephrase the question then. Did you know it was going to be hard coming in when going into this pony bootcamp? I think I had a pretty, pretty decent idea of, of, you know, right. uh, I probably undershot it a little bit, but like, I, I knew I was going to grind for, right. for a few months for sure. Do, do you, do you think everyone knew that it was going to be this hard? No, <laughs> not my <laughs> work. <laughs> no. Yeah. For whatever reason or another, I feel like not all students come in with that understanding. 
And then that's when it gets really tough, uh, obviously, especially in a larger cohort size. So yeah, the original question was just more, it felt as though that you all have jobs after the coding bootcamp, which is always a success story. But it also takes a level of just kind of, I guess, mental preparation to understand that this is not going to be easy. Even in the part-time and the flex program, you know, you have to make sacrifices to succeed ultimately. So there's definitely not like a golden ticket. And as much as, you know, these coding boot camps try their best or not try their best beforehand, <laughs> um, you, you got at least if you do get in, you have to be like mentally prepared for it. Yeah. So anyways, I, I just kind of wanted to ask that question before we kind of start about the whole curriculum and all those things. But when you started your coding boot camp, how many people did you start with and how many people graduated? Started with uh, me, myself and I. And, uh, oh yeah, because you're in the flex. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we were successful. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent success rate. Yeah. yeah. What, well, what, what was number... that like, though, like Joe, for you? Because you are. Do you felt? Did you feel like you're by yourself essentially with these flex programs, or was it just like were you in a Slack group? Like, how was that coordinated? Uh, I definitely had my mentor, and they had like a help desk, which was not the most helpful at all. Um, but. I wish I learned earlier to go to office hours. Mm. Uh, that's actually where I ran into Christine at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but office hours was super, like, just super helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to just ask questions about the curriculum, and just, like, basic, like, coding questions, too. Because, again, like, I could spin my wheels because I'm just learning for hours and hours. And there were a lot of times where, like, I honestly just wasted time and just getting frustrated. Uh, with it and then office hours it's like oh my gosh it was a period and i missed it or something <laughs> like that and did, did they that, not sell you the office hours in a way that this was going to be helpful for you <laughs> or you just kind of ignored it it was more on me it was more on me <laughs> like, oh no i got it i got it just another 30 minutes <laughs> oh that's good to know and how big were those office hours christine generally um they weren't that big, right, Joe? Maybe like three or four people um, in a room? Yeah, it just depended on whoever showed up. Yeah. Well, if Joe didn't show up, so I guess it was three, and then Joe showed up <laughs> those four. <laughs> like on the office hours, I didn't start going until at the very end. Um, I didn't know about it until towards the end. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like... Since Andrew did the immerse, immersive and you guys did the flex, it's just such a different experience. But uh, I'm glad that I, you know people can hear kind of both sides of it. So definitely, if you do the flex, utilize the office hours. And I guess for each of their individual experience, it was a hundred percent success rate because there really is no technical cohort. But uh, for Andrew, yeah, uh, the numbers on, the the numbers on my cohort were a wee bit different. Uh, <laughs> no, um, Gosh, I, it's it's hard to remember exact, the exact numbers. I think uh, we we probably started around sixty or so, oh, wow. um, which which was which was a lot, um, which was a lot. Um, the herd was culled quickly. <laughs> uh, we uh, maybe thirty graduated at the end. Uh, maybe that's probably generous. And even of folks uh, that graduated, I, I know of at least. A handful off just off the top of my head who did not end up getting jobs in tech and just kind of gave up um mm. so the success rate of the cohort was not was not great they'd have uh a, a, um like in terms of raw numbers um they, they would have checkpoints like throughout like kind of for each uh, i i think it was for like each section right so we had like a section on like basic like javascript html css and then we had a, a section on React, and then we had a section on backend and databases, and then we had a section on data structures and algorithms. And at every at the end of every one, there was uh, like a test, basically. Um, and you got basically you got two shots to pass it, uh, and if you didn't pass it, see you later. Um, and so there were. Um, there were, which it was, it was honestly, it, it, it led to some not great situations with folks who were, you know, on the, uh, you know, on on an income share agreement or something, or or or, or had loans to to do the program, and then they get, you know, to the, uh, you know, through the React section, and they, you know, didn't quite grasp React yet and failed the React test, and then they got cut. 
um, and they're still on the hook for their for their income share agreement and, or, or their loan, and they weren't allowed to complete the program. Um, so uh, there there was uh, there's a good deal of that. Um, but yeah, I'd say maybe fifty percent uh, yeah. of the cohort finished um, got their got their certificate. Got it. And so for the part time. Uh, curriculum was there the similar checkpoints as well where if you didn't pass this test you kind of were <laughs> told to i don't even know what the right word is uh you're, you're done i guess i do remember like so we would have these mock interviews uh, i think that would uh, that would be kind of like the test or like that was how ours were framed at least whereas like mock interviews yeah okay yeah Got so it. yeah for me too um I think you had like two or three chances to pass, but if you didn't, then you, I don't know, went into a different phase or you talked with some academic person. Right. Um, Was there any possibility, Andrew, for those students to go to a, like a cohort that started afterwards or is it just... As far as I know, no. Mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, they, they there were... Excuse me. Um, there were some folks that like they would they would work with some people. Uh, I see. There it didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. Um, but you know, it, it, it you know, it, again, it was another thing that felt a bit like a dice roll from what from what I saw. I luckily managed to, to sneak by all the all the interviews and, and tests, so I never had to deal with it myself. But I saw, you know, it kind of it seemed to me like it boiled down to who you know if you're if your mentor and you're so you had like a mentor and then you had like an academic like person uh, like kind of administrator that that was assigned to you that you could contact and if those people were willing for whatever reason to advocate for you and would say hey they they deserve to keep going or they deserve another shot at this etc you you could you know folks would get a third or fourth try at the interview or uh, or be allowed to continue even though they didn't technically pass or things like that but you know if you didn't have that then you were then you were out um, i see so it was definitely uh, you know a bit of a, a bit of a dice roll, but I think for for the most part it was pretty. I don't want to say ruthless, but but kind of ruthless. <laughs> you know, if someone failed the interview too, or or especially three, if they got a third crack and still didn't uh, uh, didn't crack it, then they were um, then, then they were, were were cut out. And I, I'm not sure what the uh, logic is behind doing that on on their part, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's a. Uh... Yeah, I have some opinions about that, which we can definitely talk again at a later time. Yeah, so, so do I. In this so one, do I because, if that hasn't come across yet. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll make a separate podcast for that one, but <laughs> <laughs> or talk about it today. But um, I am curious. Sixty is a lot. So, how many teach? Were there TAs as well? Because if I assume that there must have been TAs and teachers, right? For, for yeah. teaching these. So we, what's we the ratio have, for that? Yeah, we would have each section only had like one like instructor. Um, gotcha. but so we, and we had different instructors. So we had instructor for like JavaScript for react for backend and for, uh, for, for data structures and algos. Um, and then there was like a team of TAs. I forget exactly how many of them there were. And they actually kind of switched the structure of how it worked like halfway through my cohort. Um, but so uh, basically there would be one instructor doing, would you, like, go through a whole lecture for like two hours or so. Um, and then we would go off into, uh, they would like have us paired into, at one point it was pairing and then at one point it was groups and it was, it, it was, it was kind of chaos. They kept changing it. Um, and then we were supposed to log on to their really buggy video software that they could like monitor. Like no one liked to use it because it would like freeze your computer. Like I literally have screenshots. I was like, here's my computer running like 30 Chrome tabs and a Google Meet like or, or like a Zoom or something. And see, it's struggling, but it's not crashing. And then here's my computer with nothing running except for one tab of their video software and just crash. Um, so, uh, so there was that too. But, uh, but you could, there was like a Slack channel where you could like, um, basically, uh, you know, you could post in the Slack channel and it would automatically like alert a TA to like come into your 
room on the video software that they use to like help you as you were doing the exercises of the day or or or, or whatever it was um, or even if you were if it was just like kind of open working on our projects or something you could still do that so there was kind of a team of of TAs that would kind of rotate through um but I think there were maybe like if I, I can I can remember three or four maybe five of them so I'm not sure if there were that many more than that um so hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. But in terms of like the full like instructors, there was just there was just one for each uh, for each section. And then we never saw them again after we finished the section that we were that we were in. Did you feel like and I'm going to ask these same questions to both Joe and Christine, but did you feel like each instructors were experienced enough to teach the subject? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, again, really hit or miss, uh, really hit or miss um, for like the first instructor for the JavaScript uh, portion. Uh, was amazing, like, so, like a fantastic, like, honestly, like one of the best, like teachers of anything that I've ever had, um, uh, our react instructor, one of the worst, um, uh, you know, to, to the point where like, I almost, that was the point where I almost gave up was during, was during that section. Um, and, uh, I could, I could, I, w I won't go into it cause I could go on and on and on. Um, although I do know that they ended up even getting pulled off of a cohort after mine, um, because things were so bad the way that they were uh, interacting with students that students complained enough that thankful were like we're gonna we're gonna pull you out of there. Um, uh, then the 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 back uh, back end and data structures sections all were 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 were, were fine. I mean nothing. I, I wouldn't you know nothing to write home about. Um, but nothing <laughs> not nothing to write home about good or bad. I guess. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so, so it was certainly hit or miss. They were all, I would say they were all experienced, uh, certainly. And they all, uh, they all knew their stuff, um, definitely. Um, but they weren't all great teachers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and thanks for being so transparent about it. Joe and Christine, uh, obviously a different experience because it doesn't sound like there were any TAs involved and it was just you, your mentor and. I guess at the tail end of the program office hours, uh, <laughs> obviously Joe, you kind of mentioned, I need to work a while while doing this and don't totally respect that. And I'm sure Christine, uh, you have your reasons as well, but did you ever feel kind of lonely? Like usually when people think about coding boot camps, they think about the cohort, you know, the 60 and then 30, and then, you know, the, the whole, you do it together kind of thing, but did it still feel like you were just learning on your own or was there something that provided you enough guidance where you said, okay, I, I know that this is still a good program for now. Uh, I think for me, uh, thanks. Uh, it felt like I was mainly just learning a, like alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's always that saying like misery loves company. And uh, yeah. sometimes I wish I had company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of it was just following the program, just learning as I went. Uh, like I would meet with my mentor here and there. Um, what was also like helpful and this is like i guess technically outside the program was just having like friends so like don't throw away your social life at all mm. uh, but yeah just having friends like some who've gone through the boot camp some who are just like software engineers who like kind of helped me and walked me through like different concepts and different um yeah and like even my homework to be honest and then we learned javascript like throughout the program but some of them like wrote in c or c plus plus and I was able to see like how a lot of like software engineering really is just the logic. Like, mm -hmm. like they'd never touched JavaScript before, but they were able to like figure out like what to write by just following the, the simple logic and kind of like, you know, trial and error, of course, like bug, oh, bad syntax or whatever, but they would just do that. And that helped a lot. Um, mm -hmm. They also had other things aside from office hours, like the help, like the help desk or help center. But that was also like a huge hit or miss. Uh, there was that one point where like I kind of figured out who was like on shift for the help desk, <laughs> and that's when I was like, "Oh, don't even drop, don't even bother." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do you feel that since? Uh, and can you maybe you can explain the the flex program a little bit better? Was there still any time incentive for you to finish certain things by this week? Finish some certain things by this week, or was it completely self paced? You're on your own and you kind, of, you kind of dictate your schedule? Uh, it was a little bit of both. Um, they had kind of like benchmarks on where mm. we should be by certain dates. Uh, so that helped, helped me figure out if I was 
like ahead or behind or something. And I believe part of the tuition reimbursement was finishing it within like six months. Hmm. And basically if you didn't, then you wouldn't get the like guaranteed like tuition reimbursement. And when did you, how long did it take for you to finish? Uh, about seven. Yeah. Oh, so you went past the six. Yeah. Months. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, okay. You weren't even thinking about it. You were just like, F this, I'm going to get a job. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I respect yeah. that. I respect that, I respect that confidence. I respect that confidence. What would you put it? Yeah. Uh, Christine, same question. Uh, I, did you ever feel a little bit lonely or did you have other? It sounds like your husband also did software development. So that kind of helped a bit in terms of just someone to talk to, but did you utilize any other resources? So my mentor was pretty, pretty great. So I spent like, it was just once a week though, but just having him to talk to was really helpful. Um, we, I mean, we did have a Slack channel, but I think later it migrated over to discord. Uh, so we had like this discord channel and it was pretty active. So I felt like I could, like talk with people there and like I networked with some people through that as well. And yeah, I think like similar to what Joe said, like you definitely like it's a it's a tough time in your life, like to go through such a rigorous boot camp. So you definitely don't want to just cut yourself off from all the people around you. Like, you know, let, I talked with my parents, I talked with my friends, let them know like what I'm doing, what I'm learning, and they were just really supportive through it. So even if they're not in tech, um yeah, I think that's, that support system is really critical. Yeah. I have, a, I have a quick thought before I forget it, just because because my, my cohort also jumped to Discord and, and made, a, made a Discord uh, server um, because um, I, I just, I, I just want to throw this out here because I think it is, is it kind of illuminates uh, that w- where Thankful's priorities are, I guess, and like how they are treating their their students, um, is that they are uh, they're on the free Slack plan and won't uh, up upgrade it. Um, so and and everyone and it's not just students who are in their Slack workspace; it's all potential students. Anyone like you could you could go right now and and get into the Thankful Slack as a prospective student and join all the and, but so they're hitting the limit of, of messages that you can have in a free Slack workspace, like, like every couple of days. So things are, so things are constantly disappearing. Um, and so the combo, uh, yeah, at least, you know, uh, my cohort, we're like very explicitly, we're like, okay, all of our stuff's disappearing. And also we feel like they're um, like reading all of our messages and like retaliating against people who are, 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 pointing out some flaws and things that are going on so like let's get out of here and let's go uh let's go make a discord um uh, we also did so we, we we also did that uh well <laughs> the uh the, the the full-time program there's a very palpable uh like this is not it's not enough what we're getting here uh in terms of of being able to even talk to each other and the the community so um i just want to yeah in some ways i wonder if the flex program was a little calmer in a sense that you don't have, you didn't have to be around other people and you kind of just were, was working at your own pace versus like possibly a herd mentality, right? Like maybe over accepting too many people and possibly not qualify people and then combining them all together in, in like a one big room and then realizing that, hey, we're not all on the same level at the moment. And it's glaringly obvious. And that it's just, you start forming little factions here and there. And then it's just kind of like, oh goodness, like we're not getting what we want. Cause you know, we, you know, there's too many people in the core, but like in a flex schedule, you're just kind of on your own and you could kind of utilize your resources as you need be. So even though the immersive experience technically should be more immersive, maybe the, the sheer quantity of uh, accepted students could, could have diluted that a bit. So that's something to think about for sure. It's like maybe for people that are still here listening, you know, the one thing you should ask any coding bootcamp is how many students do you generally accept, right? And understand the teacher slash TA to student ratio. I'd yeah. say too, if you do a, a full-time, like a full-time immersion type program, like live with a cohort, um, mm-hmm. then no matter the size is that like, you got to kind of find your, find your people um, mm-hmm. in it. Like, you know, maybe you will be in a cohort of 50 that all like all click with each other and it's one big happy family. Um 
if that happens, like tweet at me about it. Cause I'd, I'd love to hear more. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I, I think just one thing that I, I mean, from my own personal experience, it's just talking to a lot of coding bootcamp grads in general, it's just not specifically thankful, but just any coding bootcamp that has a very relatively easy acceptance rate is kind of like a red flag in some ways, right? Unless, you know, you make that business decision saying like, yes, I, I understand what I'm getting myself into and I understand these kinds of possible red flags, but at the same time, you know, I know it's going to be different for me, <laughs> right? Because of X, Y, Z. Uh, I have other friends that are in the coding space that could, that I could refer to. And those are things a little bit outside of the like boot camp, right? Like not everyone's going to have that resource, unfortunately, but I'd say just by sheer numbers alone, right? Like 60 is a lot, right? <laughs> uh, if it's 30 and you cut it down to like 20 something or 25 that, you know, that because not everyone's going to possibly make it, then yeah, that, you know, that the ratio is good and you know that, Hey, it's tough enough that people are kind of leaving in, in, in that regards. Right. So I would just ask a bunch of questions before you even get into a program, like a coding bootcamp, just because Again, nothing is guaranteed with coding boot camps in general. So, and in terms of Slack, uh, I think it's pretty odd that it's a free tier for current students. It should have, there should be like a separate Slack group for current students, and then I, maybe a separate like I a completely separate agree. <laughs> yeah, because actually, even for me, I was in a paid Slack channel, but they eventually kicked us all out after we graduated, and it's been like four years now, two, three. So there's really no point of the Slack channel, but at least for current students, Slack is kind of where a uh, majority of those things are. So maybe that, that that's really good feedback for Coding Bootcamp, specifically thankful on that. Yeah, let's move on to, yeah, tech stack. What did you all learn? Um, yeah, so it's like pretty much full stack, like JavaScript. So we learned mm -hmm. React and we use Node and Express for the backend and we learned Postgres. Um, in terms of deployment, like we use Vercel and Heroku. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. And then DSA, um, like the, the typical, or I guess like the basics of DSA. Cool. And for the part-time or sorry, I keep saying part-time, but for the flex role, um, how many projects did you end up building after, uh, by the end of the, uh, cohort? Um, so I built two like full stack applications. And those are like the main projects, like they call it the capstone projects, mm -hmm. but there were also like smaller, like mini projects that, that I built, that we built. Um, yeah, just like with jQuery, um, nice. and some other things. Yeah. And Joe, uh, for, did you also build two projects for your capstone projects? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure we built like similar projects, if anything. Um, mm. yeah, two full stack projects and like mini ones that we use kind of as like benchmarks, like as we like finish sections, like a very basic HTML, CSS, like website or something that you probably shouldn't use on a resume, but you know, <laughs> things like that. How, how was the uh, project idea formed? Was it just, you just thought of the idea and you built it, or do they give you a couple of suggestions on what are good applications to build to showcase? What was that process like? Uh, for, for the two projects that I had, they, they gave us the idea already. Uh, one mm -hmm. was like a flashcard app. The other one was like a simple, like restaurant reservation app. Uh, and I think part of it was cause they had like built in tasks so that they could test and essentially like grade and make sure that your project is like up to par. Cause you can always just make a project and then it kind of works, kind of doesn't, but you know, we have to make sure that like it passed the test. Um, so they gave us like the prompt, they gave us a lot of direction, which was helpful as well as like, you know, the read me and like what to do, how to set it up. And then from there, we just build it out. Christine, did you have the same projects? Um, I had, I, I, so I didn't do a flashcard app. Um, I, but yeah, what, like what Joe said, there were like, there was like a grading rubric. So your project needed to include like these things. Um, but it was basically. One was like a fake e-commerce e app that I made. Um, the other one was just like a post, like post and commenting, like a blog basically that supports all the CRUD functionalities. Cool. And did you feel like those projects were good enough for, I guess, 
to showcase as a capstone project? Um, I, I mean, I did work really hard on them. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, by the time, like I was applying to jobs, like I definitely did have to like go back and kind of like polish things up a bit more to make it more presentable. But yeah, I would say like overall, I was, I could confidently talk about this project. Right. Yeah. Let me rephrase the question uh, made, made for Joe is just, do you feel like doing those two projects gave you enough confidence of like, oh, I could actually build a full stack application. And if I was to just join a company, <laughs> I have those skills to do those things. Uh, yeah, it did give me like a good amount of confidence. Um, because then like we were able to like see like the whole crowd operations and then work on the middleware. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I guess like from undergrad to like working professionally, I always knew that like, no matter how much this bootcamp teaches me, uh, the real working world is just not going to look the same. So like, there's yeah. still a steep like learning curve that mm -hmm. I'm still learning right now. Uh, and like, I know that this, these projects are good and like, you know, I can learn a lot, but once I find a job, it's going to look completely different. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's hundred percent. This is just the baby steps to get you to the ground floor. Uh, I personally, uh, my coding bootcamp did rails and I only did maybe like three relationships, like users, like some relevant post comments, that's it. You know, you just have, you just have these very small relationships, right? And then all of a sudden you join this big company and there's just so many random join tables and all this, you're just kind of like, what the heck is going on here? But at least you kind of have an idea that, okay, I've seen this before and now it's just scaled like 10 X. So, uh, time to work a little longer today <laughs> to understand all of these relationships. Uh, yeah, Andrew, what was your project structure like for a full-time immersive? Was there any team aspect of it? Was it all individual based? What was that like? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, uh, that, that, that was, uh, so when we, when we started, um, we were under the impression that we were going to have a few projects that were going to be like pair, um, the, you know, pair programming kind of a, a deal and some that were going to be solo and that our capstone was going to be like a team so that you would, uh, uh, you know, that, you know, I remember it was explicitly kind of pitched to us as like, you're, you're, Hey, you'll, you'll, you'll have experience pair programming. You'll learn to do it on your own. And you'll also have experience working on a team. So you'll have all these three different experiences that you can talk about. Um, and then uh, uh, having having teams was too complicated, so they didn't do teams. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we we had I would say we had probably like three or four I would say like like big projects, um, and then a, a few like small ones in between. So like we started like in our like JavaScript section, we also learned jQuery in our, our JavaScript uh, section. So we like built uh, that one was everyone built the same thing. Um, but we built like a quiz application, right? Um, and then uh, and I think the second one, we also all built the same thing and it was also jQuery, but with a little bit of, with some, with a backend as well. And that was uh, a bookmark uh, application, like basically like making an app to replace your bookmarks bar, I guess. Um, and then the last two like big projects, uh, which were for React and then for our, uh, like our capstone uh, were, uh, pretty much choose your own adventure. Um, you had to, uh, you, you had to pitch it basically to them. Like you had to explain your idea, uh, to them and, and, um, uh, but then you were, you were running with it. Um, so I think it was, it might have been others, but I think those were like kind of the four like pillar projects, uh, that we had. Um, and if I remember right, the, the first one, the very first one, um, I did with a partner, uh, and then the rest, uh, by, by the second, uh, time they, they, seem to have given up on having any pair projects or group projects and everyone was just, uh, it was everyone for themselves, uh, which, uh, y'all in the, the flex program were like, the whole thing was everyone for themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I, yeah. At least with the immersive program, how attentive was like the TAs with your, like as you're building and getting, or you getting constant feedback about it or was it just yeah. kind of like, um, yeah. Yeah, you would you you could get feedback um, there, and there were like checkpoints um, that Good. you would have yeah. to like pass. Um, 
that because and they, and also separate from the TAs, they would have, they have like a whole team of like graders, um, which everyone was always like, oh my god, like what are like because you would get you would <laughs> you'd work with a TA and the TA would be like everything's good and then you'd submit it and then it would not the grader would say it wasn't good enough. So uh, there there was there's a bit of that as well, but uh, yeah, you you. you Access uh, to the TAs was, uh, I don't think, was was often a problem. Um, it was, uh, yet again, uh, you may be sensing a theme, kind of a dice roll on, like, which TA was going to respond to your request. Um, there were some that everyone... Um, uh, there, there were some TAs that everyone, when you when you saw them come in after you put a request, you'd be like, oh, thank God. Like, thank God it's you. Um, and there were some TAs where, like, they come on, you'd be like, Mm, okay like let's try to get through this like without anyone getting mad or 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 you know, uh, or, you know just uh, a disaster and hopefully also solve the problem uh, so it was a bit of a dice roll as well but uh, access to them I, well, wasn't too uh, wasn't too difficult you, you'd fairly um yeah, you, know, you, you you get them, and, and we. I think well, one of the benefits of being in the full time program and like having a cohort uh, too was that we. Um, there was a certain uh, a bit of camaraderie and kind of like people like helping each other. Like people would have um, like study rooms going, like even like in the evening, like after we'd like all wrapped up, people would be like, oh, like I'm going to like, I'm just going to throw up a Zoom and like we're, I'm going to be in here studying if you want to join or, you know, you kind of learned who were good at like, or, you know, you figured out who was picking up what faster. Um, you know, like we had one guy in our, in our cohort who had actually worked as a developer um, prior to joining the bootcamp. Um, and I guess like he was in kind of a kind of a bad work uh, situation um, and and quit and then had trouble finding another job uh, and he ended up at uh, doing thankful because he wanted a, he wanted a credential because he didn't have like a degree or anything um, so he wanted the certificate and also heard that thankful's uh, career uh, uh, you know career help was good which I'm sure we'll get into that too uh, but so he came to thankful to to do that and but so he he knew everything <laughs> so everyone we actually had a we had a channel in our discord uh, that was explicitly called Richard help. <laughs> and so you could just post in Richard help and Richard would come and help you probably faster than the TAs would. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there was a good, uh, a good amount of that as well. Getting help from, uh, from, from the other folks in the, in the cohort who were in the, in the, in the trenches with you. I don't think uh, Thinkful is accredited, so I don't. I'm not sure what what he was actually going to go yeah, uh, for well, at that well, time. Like, I mean, there is a piece of paper, right? They do give you like a yeah. certificate at the end that's like uh, yeah. you completed Thinkful. Um, uh, yeah, which like I remember when he kind of when he first told me that, I was like, I don't know if that's I don't know if you're what you're looking for, bud. Um, I don't know if that's going to help <laughs> you all that much. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's he's doing great now. He got a job at a Thinkful and is doing great. So um, I guess it did work out in the end. But um, yeah. Good, good yeah. for him. Did you feel <laughs> like before they decided to do single projects or single individual projects, were you learning a lot of Git and GitHub? Were you doing like pull requests and stuff amongst each um, other? We learned like uh, I, I think they kind of gave us like they gave us a bit, a, a bit of it, a, a kind of a crash course. Um, I remember being very, I was very intentionally like I know that I need to you know, know this, like even, even at right at the outside, I was like, I don't know what Git is, but I've seen it on every job rec that I had as a recruiter for a software developer. So yeah. it's gotta be important because no matter what language I was recruiting for, Git was always on there. Right. So, um, yeah. so I was pretty intentional about like making sure that I knew what was, um, you know, it, it was getting my feet under me with, with Git. um, that was definitely something though that you kind of had to, you know, again, they gave us like a crash course and like a little bit, but it was not, um, after that first project that was done in pair, like that, that first project that was done in pairs was like very locked down. Like they were like, okay, like do it. Like one person, you know, was going to be, you know, like actively coding. Um, and then like, you know, whether you like set a timer or like just agree to like stop at a certain point and then they're going to, you know, push their code and the other person's going to pull it and then they're going to keep where they're like, that was pretty regimented. But then after that, after, after we were kind of working on our own on things, it was kind of like, yeah, make sure you commit often and, uh, uh whatnot. Um, it, it was definitely, so I think I, I don't know if it was after boot camp or during boot camp, um, but either during or, or right after I ended up doing like a Git uh, course on like Udemy or something, um, mm. to like get more, um, uh experience with that and 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 have just have a, a more solid base of of knowledge with git right 
And personally, even for me, I don't think my Git experience was phenomenal by any means compared to what I am today. Uh, I knew just enough to push up a branch and do a pull request. And that's about like merge conflicts was my greatest nightmare um, <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't know what code to delete and, and or what to other keep. Still is, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, uh, not as much. I don't mind deleting code. It was just, uh, it was always a revert. So, <laughs> but I am curious with Joe and Christine, since it was more individual based, did you feel like Git was slightly lacking or was there something within the curriculum that made it a little bit more integrated in your day to day? Yeah, like I remember the one like Git module that we learned. Um, it was like, hey, uh, make, a, make a pull request and then and then like you know merge it in and then create your own merge conflict <laughs> so it's just kind of like nice. like you're acting like you're on both sides <sighs> um I, yeah but i definitely needed to like go back and review git again like after boot camp too mm -hmm. so i guess when you were working on your project you were just kind of pushing up to mainline directly more or less yeah yeah I mean, it's not the worst. I mean, it's your own project. So. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Break production. <laughs> uh, Joe, what about you? It's just a joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's similar. Like, since it was just me, like, mainly me, it just get pull, get push. <laughs> and that's pretty, like, that's pretty much it. Uh, like, I remember the Git module and then coming out of it being like, oh, I still feel very like, I feel like I don't really know what I'm doing. So I did get some extra resources from my mentor, mm -hmm. which was like kind of helpful. But as like the bootcamp kind of went on, it's like, oh, I'm not using it too much other than get pull and get push. And I guess like add and commit, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, it's very important. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, you are all learning so much so fast. And you need to prioritize your learning somehow, some way, right? Like, you know, let's build a project. Let's, you know, it, yes, you're pushing it up to Git. So you're familiar with it. But ultimately, I, I, I would say I learned all of my Git stuff after I got my job. And that's when I started having the uh, the freedom to actually learn because I was still getting paid, you know. So get paid to learn is definitely a great way to do it. So, I, I mean, you don't have to be a Git expert by any means. But I was just kind of curious to see how little or how much uh, Git was integrated in your like day-to-day. -day. I, I think at least from my experience, uh, all of our homework assignments were, were required for you to do a pull request. They had like automated tests that would run against it. So if you don't pass those tests, you don't actually, you can't actually merge it in. So yeah, no, this is really good. So you all built projects, you mostly full stack JavaScript. That's awesome. Uh, definitely different experiences for uh, the Flex program versus the Mercer program. So I think this is really helpful from that perspective. Um, but yeah, let's talk about jobs. Uh, how was the job support after you graduated? And did they help facilitate it in any way? Did they give you introductions to other companies? Or was it kind of, oh, you're getting close to graduating? Just apply to a bunch of jobs and we'll try to help out with the interview as much as we can. Yeah, I mean, I, I could speak to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I had an awesome career coach uh, after graduating. Uh, like she was like super active on Slack all the time, like giving all these leads like every day. Um, I met with her like once a week or once every two weeks. I honestly feel like there was a lot of support, um, like, uh, just from my subjective experience, getting support like to uh, apply to jobs, and they had like a resume review uh, thing. So yeah, I mean, overall, I feel like they did a pretty decent job. But it was definitely really hard. Still, like that was like mm. just doing that was not enough. Like I had to like you know grind, delete code, and you know continue to like work on you know, cleaning on my projects and whatnot and like learning more React and stuff. And yeah, so it was, it was definitely like really hard. I'd say maybe like as hard as the boot camp itself or maybe even harder. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Yeah, similar. I felt like the interview process was harder, but made me to some degree like learn more, if anything, because then... I would have to go to different resources like YouTube or like, or use them more often. And then a lot of lead code and, and things like that. 
Uh, my career coach was also pretty helpful. She just sent me a ton of like, like a ton of jobs, like job applications. So then mm. it saved me time from like searching for them. And even that's just like just saving me time so that I can just apply. Uh, they also did things like the resume workshops and then posted, uh, I believe on the Slack channel, whenever like something would come up. Like I remember Robin Hood had something for like boot camp grads, like a resume workshop. And then she posted that and like a bunch of us went. Uh, they also provided us with like some skilled tokens, which was, which were like super helpful. Um, basically it's like you sign up to do like a mock interview with someone and then, it, you know, you'll treat it like a real interview. There'll be like a technical assessment or depending on which one you want to like prioritize and to learn more in. Um, and that just helped me for like when interviews actually happen. Cause that's like the closest that you'll actually get to like practicing for an actual interview. I, I put the job search aspect into two categories, trying to get the interviews and then actually doing well on the interviews. And it's so hard to get noticed. So that's why it's like another, jo- it's a job to get noticed. And then once you get noticed, you're like, oh crap, this is actually really hard because they're actually going to test you on stuff. So it sounds like at least for both of y'all, um, you got you got some support of actually finding the jobs, but then there was just some other aspects where you had to just improve a little bit through practice and technical exercises, right? Improve a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about you, Andrew? Uh, Yeah, I I mean, not to uh, keep uh, keep beating this drum, but I I think for for my experience, it was uh, again a bit of a dice roll on on who got assigned to you um, Mm. as far as your your career advisor was. Um, I, you know, some folks had a great experience, some folks had a terrible experience, and some folks had had a middling experience. I think I also, you know, just me personally was in a bit of a, a kind of a unique situation on the, um, you know, the job search uh, part of things, uh, just coming from being a recruiter and having, I think, a lot more uh, kind of, you know, inside knowledge, having literally been on the other side of the table, um, like just a year, you know, not even a full year before, um, you, you know, between um, you know, really like just six months before uh, beforehand um, or maybe like eight months, whatever it was. Um, so I kind of, you know, had, uh, you know, I had a lot of, uh, kind of, you know, insight and, and a lot of thoughts on, <laughs> on, on how uh, to effectively job search and the thankful approach, uh, seemed to be, oh, okay, well just apply to all of these jobs that I'm sending you. Um, and they'd be, and, and yeah, they would send me a lot of jobs to apply to, um, some of them would be relevant. Um, some of them would be not relevant at all. Um, some of them would uh, sometimes be explicitly, I'd be like, Hey, I'm not interested in X, Y, Z. And those would be, they'd be like, okay, great. I won't send you anything on X, Y, Z. And then the next batch of jobs they send me, there'd be 10 jobs that were X, Y, Z. And it was just like, okay, well, like, are we really, you know, is like, am I having any input into this? Um, and, and, and yeah, and, and there were, you know, for, for us as well, they had like resume, um, like they help folks write resumes and like do LinkedIn and stuff, um, which again, me per, like personally, I didn't feel like a lot of benefit from. Um, but again, that was unique because like I, again, I just come from uh, from being a recruiter and kind of had that bit kind of locked down. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, they, they focused a lot on on just sheer number of applications, uh, which like I get because uh, it's easy to measure, and that's kind of the whole ball game for them at that point is is is, is you know if you know have metrics because if they we have metrics and then folks don't hit them, then no refund, right? Um, mm. and, and yeah, and if you it's a sheer numbers game. If you send thousands and thousands of applications, you'll probably end up with a job uh, somehow, but you know, that kind of came at the expense, I think, of emphasizing uh, a more effective approach. Like um, em- they had emphasized, you know, networking and making more connections in, uh, you know, in the industry and, um, you know, and, and chatting with folks. I mean, that's what I advise people to do now is, you know, if you're spending, you know, if you only have an hour a day to spend on job search, then like, and you're, you know, either going to send out 20 job applications or, or have, have two or three, you know, chats with, with new people and connect with new folks. I'm like, connect with new folks every day and twice on Sundays. Cause that's, uh, I think it's so much more effective in, 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 
in getting a job. Um, but uh, thankful definitely pushed um, apply, 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 apply. Uh, yeah, which you know, uh, which again, like, w- which like will eventually work. Um, uh, you know, at the some shotgun point, approach. Will... Yeah, 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 yeah. Shotgun, like even a blind squirrel firing a shotgun will knock a few nuts out of the trees, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah, it, it will. But it, it's, it's it's a it's a tough one because in some regards, it's hard to be picky when your skill sets aren't really, you know, like you're asking a company to take a chance on you. So it's like, I mean, I would even argue to this day, like I don't. That's just like I haven't really worked at a company. I was like, oh my god, I want to work here. Um, and if I did, I didn't get the job because I didn't feel I didn't pass the interview. <laughs> so like even experienced engineers, like you still have to go through the technical exercises. And if you don't do well, doesn't really matter how uh, you know compelled you are. Um, maybe uh, maybe developer advocacy that could be a little bit different. But for a pure like technical software engineer, they still kind of follow that same structure. So it's a little tough. But uh, Joe and Christine, like, how long did it take for you to find your first position? And Andrew, same question. And also, what do you think was the average for your cohort to find a job? And maybe if you could ballpark guess, like, how many ended up just not finding a job and doing something else? So Joe first, Christine, and then Andrew. Yeah. Uh, So then for me, it took me about, like, six months to get to find my technical first job. Uh, But that was, like, a part-time thing before, like, my full-time job, like, now. Um, And that was also through connections. It was pretty much, like, a friend of a friend needed, like, a web developer. Because then, like, her, her, like, parents, like, own, like, a startup. And they're actually, like, doing pretty well. But their web dev, uh, like, left. And they just need someone to, like, maintain their website. And that first job was just straight-up HTML, CSS. Uh... We also use like Bitbucket and not like GitHub. So it was like, okay, whatever. Um, but it was experience. And like, I was the only software engineer or wow. like software engineer in terms of web development. They had like other ones, but they did it like embedded. They didn't really like touch anything that I did. Uh, so it's not like I really learned much from like people because there was like no one to really guide me. Uh, but that yeah. still took about like six months of just applying interviewing, getting close, and then not getting anything like a couple of mm-hmm. times. So there was still like a large grind. And then while I was working like at that part time, uh, I eventually like landed the job where I'm at now. And that was also through connections through like, so another you're saying that group. all these, so you got all these uh, job prospects, you applied, didn't get the job, but it was through connections and networking. Somehow you got the job. So bravo. Yeah. <laughs> it's repetitive in a sense of like people always say network, 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 but it's so true. Like I know for a fact that I, if I talk to certain people, I could get jobs there too. And I probably don't even have to interview at this point because you know, your job experience five years plus, like if you have five years plus, and then you also have like a really good connect, they, they're not really going to interview you too much, too hard. Um, unless it's like thing basically. But, um, yeah, no, that's really awesome to see that, you're able to get it through connects, but it's also kind of sad in some ways where those job prospects by Thinkful didn't really work out. So yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Christine, what about you? Yeah. So for me, I landed my very, like my first job in within, uh, in three months and I was able to, like, I didn't know anyone at the the company, but I just cold contacted people on LinkedIn. And honestly, like I was pretty surprised like how nice people can be on LinkedIn um, and just like genuinely helpful that they could be. And so, yeah, that was my way in. So both of y'all did it by yourself. I I have fun. fun. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right, right. But it was like an individual effort of (laughs) required a little bit. But yeah, what about you, Andrew? (laughs) Well, congratulations I also, there, I just want to throw Alex is over here yeah. going, I'm not going to have the job search again. Yeah, well, if I can put X Amazon in my bio, I'm not going to have the job search again either. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I get rejected plenty of times. <laughs> uh, yeah, none of us are immune. No. Um, so yeah. I, um, I I landed a Batovi, um, uh, in I started in April uh, of, of 2021. Um, and so about... Uh, uh, two to three months, uh, like two, two, two and a half months from when I finished boot camp. So, so pretty quick, um, uh, pretty quick. Um, 
as far as other folks, I literally just went and looked at our, uh, just like scanned like one of the Discord things I'm still in. Um, and, and there's like 15 folks in there. And I think 10 of them have tech jobs that I know of uh, right now. So like a, a fairly good hit rate, but not um, not perfect even among, uh, and all those folks have were, were graduated. So, um, uh, so yeah, yeah, not not a hundred percent, but uh, and and at least and at least one of them uh, is actually a good buddy of mine who um, who I work with now, who I referred awesome. to my company after like I got in there like two months after boot camp, worked there for a couple months. I think he was like volunteering with a nonprofit or something, uh, and then uh, I referred him, and he ended up getting a job um, with my company through knowing me. Um, so uh, there's that networking bit again. <laughs> Did you get any uh, referral money? Absolutely. And actually, no, I'm, there glad, you go. You said, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> yeah, I can tell a quick funny story about that is because so I, I think when uh, Christina, you were, Christina, you were talking about reaching out to people on LinkedIn and whatnot. And I think people are so get so apprehensive about that sometimes, like cold DMing folks on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it is, just reaching out to people you don't know. And like if you're doing it, especially on LinkedIn for the purposes of trying to get a job. Like know that any company that is worth working for has referral bonuses, right? Like you will get, so if you reach out to someone and you connect with them and they refer you and you end up getting a job, they're going to get money. Um, and oftentimes not an insubstantial amount of money. Like I literally, ju I just got back from vacation with my girlfriend and, uh, halfway through our vacation, my referral bonus for my buddy I was just talking about, like the bulk of it, because he hit his one year mark. So I got a big chunk of it. And I texted him. I was like, man, this came through so clutch for me right now on vacation. Like, thanks for sticking around a year, my guy. Um, so like, it, it's, it, you know, it makes it makes a difference for folks, even folks making, you know, good money in tech. So like, you're not imposing on folks. You are but mm -hmm. the, the best case scenario is you get a new job and they get a fat bonus check. So like don't yeah. be afraid of reaching out to people. Uh, yeah. because it's a it's a mutually beneficial uh situation. <laughs> no, I mean a hundred percent. And I I mean as much as I, I was kind of just saying, Oh, you know, you did the coding boot camps thing, but basically they just give you a bunch of leads, but somehow none of them worked out, right? So just because like as much as a coding bootcamp will try to help you, you can't just slow, solely rely on them. And this is not just specifically for Dingful, it's just any coding bootcamp in general. Like you really need to take control of your uh, your career, especially at the tail end of a coding bootcamp. And I've noticed a lot of coding bootcamp graduates struggle at this point in their in their career. Like they've learned everything they needed to learn. They've built a bunch of projects, but they still can't seem to get that job because they're not doing the cold call LinkedIn messages. They're not reaching out to other software engineers. And I, I really feel like mo more coding bootcamps need to emphasize that aspect a little bit, the networking aspect, because just blindly doing that shotgun approach can be very exhaustive. And sometimes a little, you get burnt out from it, right? Because you're just like, I sent out like a hundred emails, only one responded back and they said no. So it's just kind of like, holy crap, it's like a basically like a 99% failure rate in some regards. So uh yeah i'm really i'm really encouraged by what the three of you all did is like you you didn't just settle and just wait for someone to find you a job you actually <laughs> found your job yourself which is what i encourage everyone to do um so being really conscious of time here i had two questions but i'll just give it up for a vote and i don't normally do this but since there's three of y'all uh, you could just answer whichever one you want either i could ask you what are some highlights and lowlights of your Thinkful experience, or you could go towards the direction of well, what kind of advice would you give students that are considering a coding bootcamp? I, I'm, I'm game for both, but if I got to pick one, let's go with advice. That's my vote. <laughs> All right, J Joseph, what about you? Uh, probably similar. Yeah. Okay. All right, Christine, no pressure, but you could vote the other way if you want. All right, cool. Um, Christine, start us off. Yeah, I guess like so advice. Um, I think. Yeah, I mean, just go in with the right expectations. And I think like, you know, like finding a, a system that works for you is really important. And in, in the mid middle of, of all you doing all that, like make sure you're taking care of your health and like your, you know, you need to have it be a sustainable thing for you. And um, yeah, just have the right expectation and just know that it's going to be for a season. Um, and yeah, just be really like consistent and, you know, get accountability if you can. Um, 
So yeah, that would be my advice. Nice. Andrew? Uh, yeah, I, I think if someone's considering doing a, doing a boot camp, I, I think my my advice would be uh, think think a lot about it um, and and think about what your other options are. Um, there is absolutely nothing that you will learn in a boot camp that you can't learn on your own. Um, you so you will you will pay a very large sum of money to learn things that you can learn on your own. Like it's nothing is secret; it's all out there. Yes, you will get some structure. Um, there, there are some benefits to it, but I, I, I often joke that I could have that I could have gotten eighty percent of the benefit that I got from from uh, from doing a boot camp if I had just given my girlfriend ten thousand dollars and said, "Hey, every week that I don't study, you go spend a hundred bucks, and every week I do study, you give me a hundred bucks back, right?" Because just to get that effect of like my chips are in and I've got to do this and I can't back out, you know, like that was kind of the, that was one of the biggest things for me was I. You know, every time I wanted to give up, I was like, well, I paid a bunch of money. I can't give up. Right. So, you know, if, if you can find a way to get that um, without <laughs> without paying all that money to a boot camp, I think uh, I, I think that is uh, you know, a great choice. I mean, between, you know, just the sheer I, I could list off so many resources, but just the amount of stuff that is out there, if you can find yourself some mentors, if you can you can network a little bit, if you can talk to folks uh, and, and get yourself a good a good plan in place. And if you're someone who can, who has discipline and is able to do, do that, um, then, then save, uh, save, save your money. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, I, I have, uh, you know, I have, I have another buddy of mine I work with who I also referred to my company completely self-taught, um, completely self-taught in like the same time frame that I did a boot camp. Um, so if I could go back and take a different path, I'd take his because we work at the same job, making the same amount of money, but, but he spent much less than his training than I did. That's really it's funny. We're both actually former theater people too. So like we really had the same path. The only difference is he, uh, he didn't do a boot camp. I just happened to, uh, happened to, to meet me, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. That would be that. That's 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 my advice. Is think think yeah. hard about it uh, with a a, a a lean towards don't don't unless you have a really good reason why you should and you feel really good about the boot camp that you are are gonna go to. And before we go to Joseph, I actually have a good response for that. And um, ultimately, you did find a job. And I think in some ways, people are gonna say, "Oh, it wasn't worth it." But like, it was worth it in a sense for you. Right, but it might not be worth it for someone else, right? And because obviously they didn't find a job, so uh, don't, I, don't, from, don't, don't get me started. I I hate that I'm one of those boot camp success stories now. Like I, <laughs> they, they they tried to get me to do a thing, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not shilling. I'm not shilling for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna and, go yeah, well. That, that, it's definitely not a shill um, in in any ways for this interview. It's just more along the lines of it's really hard to replicate. I, I noticed while you were saying that there's a lot of if statements, right? If you're disciplined, yes. if you can oh, stay sure. focused, for if sure. you're not getting distracted. But I for totally sure. agree with you. The the chips on the table, it's really hard to replicate that that process where you've given so much money and now you can't you can't afford to like mess up basically, right? But when you're going down this free self-taught route, which I, again, I encourage a lot of developers to do first before jumping into this is it's too easy to give up <laughs> like, Oh, you know, like my friend's birthday this weekend, I guess I'll just go to the birthday and then, Oh, next weekend we're going to big bear. So I'm just going to go to big, like there's always a reason not to do it until you throw $15,000 into something. <laughs> and then you start thinking, Oh crap. Like I, I need to say no to a bunch of things. So yeah, I totally agree. If you can replicate it somehow, then definitely consider self-taught route first because you're right. Like the resources is all out there. It's like React, Node, Udemy, like ten dollars. You know, like you could do everything on your own. It's just the system and the the, the more clear roadmap, I guess, to building out your projects. Yeah, it's yeah, it costs a lot of money at times. So yeah, I agree though. Yeah, sorry to go off on my own tangent, Joe. This is your hour right here, so definitely <laughs> take I, take the mic no, from me. <laughs> You're good. I mean, you have plenty of wisdom too. Uh, I would say to not rush into it uh, and like take your time. Use those like free resources, YouTube, Code Academy, etc. Especially if you know that you have certain skills that aren't like coding related too. Uh, like there's people who ha who have like amazing design skills, and maybe the coding's not for them, and maybe it's mm -hmm. something like UX would be better too, or maybe they're 
data would be better because there's boot camps for that too. You don't have to do a coding boot camp if you want to do a career change. So like go explore that. Uh, and then if you explore that and figure out that coding is what you want to do, then you have to go all in. Because if you don't go all in, you're not going to make it out. Like you just straight up won't. <laughs> That's true. Were you, were you all all in at that point? Like no turning back or was there still like that little room of uh, wiggleness? <laughs> oh, it was, it was, part of it was the money. Part of it was like, <laughs> really, I quit my career. I was a CPA. It's not like a terrible job. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, I, I gotta Everyone make it use easy. A CPA. <laughs> Everyone could use a CPA. So. <laughs> I, I had I had I had the money working for me on both sides. I had the uh, I, I had the oh my god! I, just, I spent all this money on this boot camp. Like I can't give up. And then I also had a uh, at one point in my boot camp when I was. Uh, like I like when I was like so close to quitting, I went on y'all know levels FYI, right? Yeah, you know, if you ever did the site where you can see all the all like salary data for, for across the industry. And I just went and I just pulled out the like the, the entry level salary of like 30 companies that I'd want to work at and like general area salaries for like places in the country that I want to live. And I wrote them on a big piece of paper and I tacked it on the wall of my of my laptop and looked at it every single day to uh uh to motivate me to keep going so whatever motivates you <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> wow what a, what a really fun conversation i always say this with all the people i've uh interviewed but i feel like i i, I learned a lot uh, especially because i get to hear about the immersive experience and the uh the part-time or flex experience and hopefully for our listeners it wasn't too confusing like going back and forth but if anything it just highlighted some subtle differences you still learn the same tech stack but uh, maybe if you're on the flex one, it's a little bit more on the kind of you're on your own path plus office hours and mentorship. So cross your fingers that you get a really good mentor <laughs> on that front. And then the immersive experience, there might be some questions you want to ask beforehand, again, about just number of students, uh, what kind of projects am I going to be working on, uh, job support and stuff like that. So before we close out, I, again, want to give everyone a little bit of kind of time to share their contact information if anyone wants to reach out and, and kind of send you a message. So you don't have to reveal too much. Maybe it could just be like a LinkedIn or something. But yeah, we'll start off with Joseph and then Christine and then Andrew. Yeah, just uh, follow me on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. You can probably just search up my name, Joseph Zhu at LinkedIn. Uh, I think I still have my CPA there too. But anyways... Just follow me yeah. on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I could add it in the description in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for me, I'm always happy to connect on LinkedIn. Um, I can also share my LinkedIn URL with you. Um, yeah. I mean, I am on Twitter, but I don't post much that much. I just kind of lurk around. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, we connected on Twitter. So, it's, it's, it, it, well, what, a, what a small world <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Andrew? Yeah, Twitter, Twitter's a better LinkedIn than LinkedIn is. Um, but yeah, folks can, yeah. folks can hit me on LinkedIn, uh, Andrew Colburn, um, on LinkedIn. Uh, if you do connect with me on LinkedIn, just like say like, Hey, I saw you on, I saw you on tech mm. rallies thing about thankful bootcamp just so I know where you're coming from. Cause you know, I gotta, gotta filter them out, filter, <laughs> filter the, uh, spam, uh, requests somehow. Uh, so just like put a quick message in there. Um, I'm also on Twitter, uh, it's a, hockey season now so i will mostly be tweeting about the boston bruins but occasionally tech things too um and i'm i'm ar colburn on twitter and pretty much uh everywhere else that i'm active so um you can throw any of that in the the show notes or folks can can come find me i'm i'm pretty sure i'm the only one i don't think there's another ar colburn out there on the uh yeah on the internet <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And uh, for everyone that's still listening, the reason why he needs to filter out messages is because once you get a job, a lot of recruiters start messaging you. So, <laughs> oh, oh boy, do they? <laughs> I think we could all agree with that one. So definitely, you know, uh, anyone, <laughs> again, anyone that's still listening, get that first job as soon as possible. So first job's the only one that's hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, again, thank you so much for, you know, just taking your time out of your schedule to talk with me. And uh, again, I think this is going to help a lot of people that are really considering a coding bootcamp and Thinkful specifically. Uh, and for everyone that's still here, keep building developers. Your time will come. Bye. Bye. <laughs>